Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Stasis Bone Totem. So in the last episode we took the boat as Mac, and right now we are at the living dwellings of the local ship Hanala troglodytes, who are performing some very gruesome and bloody sacrificial rituals, not only sacrificing themselves because they see it as a great honor, but also the Cain people that they have been abducting. And right now uh, we are at, at a labyrinth with Mac, and I don't know that how to find my way through that labyrinth, so we are stuck there. And so is, uh, and so is Charlie. We need to wake this uh, thing up somehow so she can get out of there uh, uh, from the nursery. So the only one whom we can do any progress right now, I believe, is Moses. We still, uh, we still need to explore the rest of the sub here and look for the suits for these two. So without further ado, let's go. I do not like water. We are the same, Moses. Both forced to face our fears in this place. My Charlie. Without you, she will be lost. Without her, hope will be lost again. Do you understand, my friend? Yes. It could be different this time. A second chance. Few things are worth more. We are brave and strong. Yes, I believe that now. Okay, so Moses got over his uh, fear of water. And I originally thought that he was afraid of water because he is not waterproof, but apparently he is. Tarnished mirror. A coating of rust, mud and algae obscured the mirror's reflection, showing only vague shapes that ripple across its surface. Now some pipe in here. Looks like bloated corpses. I do not like water. I know, my friend. There are dead things. I know. Try not to think of them. They cannot hurt you. Many dead things. You are brave and strong. Moses, and you must find the suits. Hope. Hope can return. The steel toilet has partially collapsed into the floor, ringed by upturned tiles and burst piping. The distended waterlogged carcass reclines backward, its face frozen in a uh, caricature of mild shock. Hmm, airlock. An open airlock leads to crime-coded stairs ascending upward. Considering the lack of flooding above, the doorway was likely sealed, du sealed during the flood and reopened at a later time. Sealed door, a sink. Nothing of interest here except uh, this door here. Mm, oxidized and clocked shut, a dilute of mud and matter having uh, struck its surface. Oh, there's some documents. No here. escape suits. Keep swimming. They will be near the engine room. Not feeling well. Moses. Not feeling well. At all. For Ron. They just give suits. Their only chance. For Ron, please do not leave. Trying. <laughs> Trying. Hmm, Faran is losing power, I think. Rotted blankets lie tangled with cushions and clothing, all this all, all discolored by mud and decay. Some clothes, jacket, vests, a help. A whole slew of stained vests dangle from clusters of, of, of skeletal hangers. Battered corpse. The corpse lies battered, uh, covered in mud and the remains of blankets and clothing, caught and thrown about in the onrushing tidal waters. I believe that we have we should go there, but let's check this document here. Okay, and who is this? Ivan uh, Goncharov, Operations, Party Representative, okay. Uh, 14th of March 1982, Akula Mission Review. 
We are testing the Akula message relay system in a region beyond the reach of the five eyes. Five eyes? Akula will allow us to transmit and receive messages at depths previously thought impossible. 32 crew, 8 officers, 5 warrant officers and 19 petty officers and seamen. Titanium reinforced hull for cable cutting and covered intercepts. 132. Departed Severomorsk. Diesel electric hybrid running at 55% output on course for Isla Isabella, Galapagos. First contact. So now we learn more about their actual mission and what it was. 5-5. Uh, five, five. Surfaced. Our cover picked us up immediately. Transferring Akula to Lima. Okay, Lima, that's the submarine where we are right now. 7-20. Held position SE of reference point Isla de San Cristobal, Pacific. 8-2. Dive to 55 feet and headed away from the mainland. 12-43. Deployed Akula. Extremely low frequency, 3000 Hz. Transmission test 1, 12 seconds on repeat. Completed and conducted by Dimitri Kronk. 14. Changed course for the Peru Chile trench for the second deployment of Akula. Second contact test. 2nd of April. Confirmation. ULF transducer received test 1 transmission. So far, everything seems to be going well. 3rd of April, 9-1, dive to 2,500 feet, 11-40, deployed Akula, extremely low frequency, 1,000 Hz, transmission test 2, completed and conducted by Dimitri Kronk, 11-30, dive to 2,000 feet, 12-11, deployed Akula, extremely low frequency, 500 Hz, transmission test 3, completed and conducted by Dimitri Kronk. Okay, this one is a... Jesus, this is a long one. 4th of April. Uh, 1621. Came to 48 feet. 1634. Sighted possible US Pacific patrol bearing 040 degrees. T. Not sure what that means exactly. 1640. Changed course to uh, 015 degrees. 1641. Sighted Reconine Sons plane at 2 miles distance. Additional aircraft contact on radar at 10 miles. 1642. Submerged to 100 feet. 1645. Closed 9 miles and maintained position. 1721. Set speed 14 knots for the area. No noise on band 775. 1738. Heard distant explosions. 10 minute intervals. 1812, explosions closer, approximately 3 miles, 5 minute intervals. 1813, picked up propellers bearing north. And 1845, explosions closer, approximately 1 mile, 2 minute intervals. 1904, submerged to 2180 feet. 1922, 1000 MJ shockwave of 2000 feet. 1924, submerged to 4,180 feet. 1925, 1,300 mj secondary shock wave at 4,000 feet. 2014, submerged to 7,180 feet at maximum operating depth. Ah, oh, more long ones, great. 5th of April, 311, we count 100 depth charges at 3,000 feet to 6,000 feet. 312, enemy pings, uh, northwest I think. 315, all halt, running absolutely silent. 342, multiple sonar contacts, uh, north, northwest and southeast approximately 4 miles away. 343, Lieutenant Andre M. Burke ordered, make ready the stern tubes. 345, order overruled by Captain Nikolai Boynia due to operational secrecy. 406, multiple sonar contacts south, southeast and west at least two miles away. Uh, 419, submerged to the ocean floor, far exceeding operational limits, depth unknown. 520, entered an extensive cave system to avoid depth ping. 7, cave entrance collapse. 710, 
no more enemy contacts, only biologics. 831. Catastrophic engine failure and hull breaches throughout. New superstructure is buckling. 935. Fire in garbage treatment and ejector plant. 1045. Malfunction in the diesel engines and consumed a large portion of the oxygen. 1249. 02 bleed caused the suffocation of petty officer Boris Komarov. 1355. Contained fire in hydraulic and shafting systems. 1421. Electrical fire in forward control damaged the depth gouging and echo sounding system. We are blind. 1932. Visual confirmation that the cave entrance collapse sealed the inlet. Okay, two more. 6th of April. Uh, 102. Fire has been contained. And a translated decoded message. 8th of April. Today I made a shocking discovery about the captain. As we sat in cramped quarters, he pulled out a small cross from under his shirt and began to pray silently to himself. At first I was taken aback. As a good Soviet citizen, I have been taught to uphold the principles of the state and reject any form of religious worship. In a world where we are constantly surrounded by danger and uncertainty, it must give him a sense of comfort and strength to turn to a higher power. If I were in his position, I would want to hold on to anything that could bring me hope and solace. Okay, so that was Koncharov. We may find more uh, documents of some other crew members. Okay, but let's leave here. Well, well, we got some. We, we got lots of trash here. Sources. Uh, food boxes. Tents. Mm, some junk. Mm, counter. The noctisite counter holds rusted cooking uh, ut uh, uten utensils and pots that lie in the depths of its upturned shelving. Twisted body. The body lies twisted into, uh, into awkward uh, contortions due to an arm pincered between shifted uh, counters. The gaping mouth projects a silent scream of pain. Some old food, plastic junk. Rosa, my friend, you are Rosa. Very scared, very frightened. You're our only chance, Bear. You're all we've got. Hope is alive. Hmm. More kitchen items and plastic plates. A carpet of plastic plates, cups and cutlery lie strewn across the floor, violently disgorged from the shelving that housed them. Okay, nothing too interesting here. At least nothing, nothing that we can pick up. Oh, no, no. Dead things. I do not like dead things. Moses, listen. Cannot do this. I am not strong enough. I was not strong enough then. My friend, you are right. You were not strong enough. And there is no fault in that. I am failing again. Those feelings, lies, push forward. Push forward and I will prove it to you. Hope. Here, strength does not matter. Only courage. Charlie Mac. Push forward. Push forward. So do I just... Okay, so I have to do something to this, obviously. Uh, do we use the... Asset? Yes. Okay, we lost the... Asset ball. So... That's now gone. Containers. Strapping. Chocolately cut straps dangle from pilfered storage containers. Ladder. 
The latter bears ample evidence of dents and deformation caused by colliding debris and cargo. So we can't use it. Bloated cadaver. The twisted cadaver sl uh, slumbers under a blanket of scrap and slime. A banner. The familiar Soviet banner hangs laxly. Rot and mold crawling up like rats flee uh, fleeing uh, flooding waters. Hmm, hatch. A maintenance, ha maintenance hatch hides behind a mound of mud and, and refuse. A missing handle rendering it uh, inoperable from from this side. So we can't use it. Great. And I see bloody. stairs. I see air. One more push, my friend. One more effort. Stay for on, please. I try. This postulant balloon lies uh, deposited like a beached whale. A quick death during turbulent transit. Well, at least the death was quick. Okay. At least we are out of the water now. I, the door closed behind us, so we can't leave. Okay, I can see a document there. Battery station. A replaceable battery provided power to energy efficient mission critical systems, like electrically managed doors, should all other power systems fail. Unfortunately, it has to be removed for service elsewhere, exposing the power jack terminal. Okay, so we need, need, we need a new battery then, I think. Cabling, dangling corpse. Ah, did someone hang themselves here? The corpse dangles from the rafters, hung by the neck, still clothed in emergency garb. The airtight leggings have swollen with collapsed offal. Air, light, no water. Well done, my friend. Well done. Moses, are you through? Are you okay? I am brave. And strong. Yeah. I'll say. I'll say. Look for the suits now. Like Ferran said, they'll be near the engines, probably a level below. Okay. An electro sealed hatch. An unfortunate sailor scrambled through the hatch at the moment uh, of its closing, which was further complicated by a loss of power. He remains pinned under the electro hatch door, his head partially crushed. At the same time, his lower torso dangles free in the gangerous uh, waters below. Creating submarine engine. Monstrous twin diesel engine engines run the length of the room, faintly reeking of pet petroleum, burnt plastic and copper. Ancient run uh, runnels of bleeding oil stain the machinery, while piping weaves along the surface like branching veins. Okay, well, let's get this over with and read this document. Okay, who is this? It's so bloody that, of course, there's quite a few entries here. Uh, Adasiek Novak, warrant officer. We don't know this one, I don't think, at least not by name. 27th of March, uh, 82. I was christened in Krakow by Cardinal Wojtyla himself. I don't know how to pronounce that name. But unfortunately we left that place when I was young, and I have witnessed orthodoxy's folly with my own eyes. So to see my dearest captain, Nikolai Boynia, spit at the state and give himself to this religious cult pains my heart. We have spent five tours together. I have tried to hide it from everybody, my companions and the party. I turned my cheek when he insisted on a Christmas toast to his savior. I turned my other cheek when he asked to hold hands and exchange Easter Easter Pisanke. I have no more cheeks to turn. I shall disclose this dogmatic religious mindset when we return to Soveromorsk. Well, luckily for Boynia, you never reached reach there, I guess. 9th of May. We finally entered the flooded section after it was commanded to be sealed by Boynia. The smell was overpowering. A mixture of salt water, stale air and rotten flesh. There was debris floating everywhere. Papers, tools, even a pair of shoes. It was a mess. I can't even describe the shock and horror I felt when I saw the bloated bodies of those poor boys. 
10th of May. A few men plan to use escape suits. Okay, so they were planning to use them. I was, I was wondering about that. We excitedly rushed to the storage and found only five. Five for a crew of over 30. Thank you, Central Planning. We have agreed that if all cannot leave, none can. This is the spirit of our camaraderie. Well, that's admirable at least. 16th of May. It may be my hunger playing tricks on my now feeble mind and hungry body, or that infernal song playing over the speakers daily, but I had a vision. It was so real. Am I slipping into madness? It was as clear as day. They opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as oil, the moon red as blood, and pestilence arose from the ocean. Then, like a swarm of locusts, great clouds filled the air until the sky was blackened. Everywhere the cloud touched, madness entailed. Captain Nikolai Boynia said this is a sign God has given me, a phantasm, and a warning of things to come. I do not believe that. That is a long one. 1st of June. Dmitry Balabanov, Alexander Vyakrivev, and Kirill Tokarev donned suits and left without a whisper. Ilyusha was not so lucky and got stuck when the hatch was sealed. Ah, oh, so that's the poor sot over there. His spine was crushed, but we heard him calling for his mama. I was forced to put my friend down like a lame mule. I am sure he would do the same for me. At first I was angry and betrayed. How could they do such a thing? We are all in this together. They broke the bond of trust that we had built over the years. But as the hours passed and the water continued to rise, I couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope for them. At least they can survive, seek help and possibly be rescued. The fear of starving is primal. They acted out of desperation and self-preservation. But I regret that there was no chance to say our final words. Okay, a few more. 2nd of June. We all saw the shadows on the wall again. Are they real? I can't tell anymore. I need help to distinguish the real from my starving-induced imagination. The captain has again taken a turn for the worse. He now pours himself into the books and the testaments. He says my vision is a sign that we must lead a war against shadows. He insists we pray while he finds the answer. I should never have told him. 6th of June. The captain has confided in me. His plans to arm the warhead. He says it is the only way to rid the world of the coming pestilence. He removed the shielding from one of the cores, but Giorgi held him back. The fishing core burned their faces and arms. They fought brutally up top. This madness bears no end. I have sealed the hatch. I don't know how long I can keep it shut. The men are calling my name. Captain Boynia calls me Abaddon, Judas, and shed him, and cries for me to open his lima and save the world. I am sure they have booby-trapped the hatch. And lastly, 7th of June. There are no more noises, no more calls or curses, no more banging or crying. I am returning to my station, a proud Soviet man. Okay, at least he died with pride, I guess. Alright, so let's take a look at this. These controls are hard to understand. Yeah, tell me about it. Old military tech in a language that's not spoken anymore. The suits are gonna be below you, Moses. And that's probably flooded too, I hate to say. More water. Yeah, but if we could get the engines running, that gives us power. And we could use the ballast tanks to clear it. It is a desert submarine. That fuel would be long since ruined, but it would have relied on batteries for silent running. Those would be dead too. Perhaps a substitute. A uh, substitute. Hey, what do we have any substitute? Well, what was this? A power cell. Can we use this? Adding the batteries, Mac. Adapting power supply to new consumption system. Hmm? What's someone there? Charlie's right, you're amazing. My Mac. Someone went down there, or was it just a corpse? Food containers, grating, um... 
Okay, well, let's go down. I swear I saw someone coming down here. Sunken body. Freed from the hatches vice. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe it was that corpse. Okay, it wasn't just a some living person, a survivor. Freed from the hatches vice, the body has drifted down to the chamber floor like a discarded play doll. The gar the gargantuan ballast tank emits a sword. Cold, cold okay. and thick, but I am not scared now. Good, Moses. Good. You have to find the suits. They have to be there somewhere. Anyway, the gar the gargan the gargantuan ballast tank emits soft groans. Its casing bloating as the metal struggles to contain the gas stored within. Yet, Sam, what is not? Carts of moldering supplies have shifted and slipped out from the rigging, colliding in a cargo pi uh, pile up on the water surface. Okay. Valve pipe. Mac, I have found them. Using courage. Way to go, Bear. Two suits. This? Wait, but. One is blocked. That's fine. That's okay. Grab the free one. We can use that one for now. But, Mac, there are two of you. It's okay, Moses. Once we get Charlie safe, I'll make my way back here. I'll get the other one. I'll grab you too, okay? My Mac. Okay, so we got the escape suits here. A single remaining seabed to surface escape suit, still pristine and unsullied remains locked within its storage unit. The escape suit allows rapid ascent to the surface while protecting its occupant from suffocating and decompression sickness. Okay, so... well, I guess we... Mac, this valve will purge the water, yes? Moses, listen to me. Yes, it will, but... I don't know what's gonna happen when you hit that valve. I am brave and strong. I know you are, Moses. I know. But the sub could shift when the weight displaces. It could be... It will be dangerous. Hope is alive, Mac. Hope can... come back. Moses, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I can believe that. Mac, I believe. I was angry at you, Moses. I shouldn't have been. You were her best friend. What else would she have done? My Mac. Do it. And thank you, Moses. Ah, I was about to say that. Uh, did you guys notice that how, how he stopped calling Moses Moses as uh, as Bear and started calling him by his name Moses? So yeah, I, I noticed that immediately. All right, well I guess we just have to turn this valve and hope for the best and fear for the worst. Oh God. Okay, this can't be good. That cannot be good. Moses. Moses. in common, my friend. Farron. You must get the escape suit. Put it in QSD. That is that. Yes. Strong. Yes. Brave. 
You must try. Must. I cannot move. You can. You must. All it requires is everything. I know you would give everything for her. For her. Thank you, Moses. Thank you for this ending. I think we have just lost Faran. Everything. Everything. Yes. Well. Oh, holy. Okay, he can't. He can't be waterproof anymore. Oh shit. Well, he's definitely not waterproof anymore. Okay, we got the suit, but it doesn't really help us right now. So I take it that Moses is, is now dead, he's gone. We can't play as him anymore, but we can take his items at, at least. Okay, so we can get the, well, of, of, of course we can teleport the suit here somehow. I still, don't, I still don't know what kind of technology they are using to transport items when they are so far away, but... Yeah, looks like Moses is gone, and I was right. I was right that Moses is not gonna uh, survive this game. He's not going back to the surface with Mac and Charlie. And it's possible that one of these two will die as well, because we only have one suit. And there's no way that either of these two can get to the submarine, I don't think. Anyway, escape suit with adrenaline pouch. This industrial looking escape suit is a working prototype for a brand new line of full body emergency gear right out of a spy film. Our plug suit should be able to interface with this and keep us from dying from nitrogen narcosis, decompression sickness, oxygen toxicity and carbon dioxide toxicity. Seems to be a medkit attached to this. Ah, oh, medkit you say. Can you take it out? There. Medical kit's free now. Okay, I have taken a shot of this uh, right to the eyeball once. It was a hell of a party. And let's say that nine months later, Hope was born. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's how Hope was made. But the question is, can we use... Can we use this on the scrubber? And wake it, wake it up? Yes. Uh, energized scrubber. I pumped this tiny bionuclear reactor with uh, with gym candy. It looks like it is ready to well scrub. Okay, well do your job. <laughs> he he did he did not just uh, scrub the hatch from all the rust. He just obliterated the entire thing. All right, let's go down there. Oh, my God. 
Okay, that was a, a rough landing. Oh, and now we can't even we can't even control Charlie either for now. Well, shit. Uh, by the way, I noticed that how she didn't comment on anything about Moses uh, dying, essentially. But well, she has her own problems right now, so maybe she really couldn't uh, say say anything. Being infected by the fungus and everything, and so slowly die into that. So I, I, so I guess I can understand that. But now, um, I think I'm gonna end this episode here, and it looks like I can't. Well, did Charlie have any items on her besides the scrubber? Uh, I don't think she did. So these are the only items that we have currently: the dagger, warhead. Uh, leaf grenade and escape suit Okay, and I guess that in the next episode we have to go to the labyrinth and try to find our way Through that to our destination, whatever that destination is But I still don't know that 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 how to navigate through that labyrinth. There wasn't really any Like landmarks or anything like that that could help me and I tried to look at the various points of interests interests there to see any clues and I didn't notice anything so I don't know that how so I don't know that how so I don't know that how, how I'm gonna uh, get through that labyrinth and navigate through it but hey we'll just have to figure it out in the next episode so until then thank you for watching once again and see you next time for more stasis bone totem